Hello, I'm Bowden, and I recently got a new 3D printing accessory, and I think it's really cool, and I'm gonna use it to make today's prop. It's the Reality Stone container from Thor The Dark World. I'm resin printing the Aether box, with minimal modifications to the original file. After the part is fully cured, I clean the supports up. Now, I may have gone overboard with my supports, but it was a successful print. This is almost all the pieces I need to put the Reality Stone container together. I just need the corners. And the one thing that I did that's different from the model with the corners is I printed them as one piece. The, the corners were made to be broken into smaller sections so they'd be easier to print on smaller machines. Now that I have a larger machine, I put them together in the slicer and printed them out as one solid piece. I actually got it on the first try. I combined the side rails to make them just one long single piece because this resin printer can handle a print that is a bit longer. And since the Anycubic Wash & Cure Plus is made to match the dimensions of the Mono X, the printed parts will fit right inside of the wash tub and the print plate can be supported by the internal rack. The wash tub has a locking lid with a sealing gasket. I can leave the rubbing alcohol in the tub at all times so it's ready to go. With nine liters of fluid inside, this is not lightweight. And the magnets in the bottom of the internal propeller makes it feel extra heavy when moving on or off of the machine. For the wash portion, I set the timer for a few minutes and then press the dial to start the cycle. The magnetically driven mixer inside the container spins up and creates a fairly strong whirlpool of fluid inside, and it runs for two minutes. Then it slows to a stop and starts again for another two minutes. I think all the starting and stopping helps change the flow of the fluid and it clears out all the stuff around the printed object, completely cleaning it. This cycle continues for as long as you've got the timer set. The parts come out much cleaner than I ever got doing this by hand, even with cloudy fluid. Now a good question is, how long does the cleaning fluid last? Well, it seems that I can run a wash cycle with some pretty dirty fluid. I strained my 99% alcohol just for this shoot because previously I had printed a lot of black resin, so the fluid looked really dirty. But it wasn't really all that bad and straining the fluid through cheesecloth and a paper filter did a really good job. I might try coffee filters next time. So that's the wash portion. It cures too. You place the Mylar mirror on the bottom of the platform and then set the turntable on the spindle. Now my printed parts are pretty big, so I can arrange them to have all the supports on the inside and the printed part that I care about is mostly facing out. The top of the LED arm is articulated, so the UV light can hit from all sides. And there's a sensor on the back so it knows if the cover is on or off, and the lights will not activate without the cover being in place. Make sure to set the selection to cure and set the timer. The parts rotate, which exposes all sides to the light, including the underside because of the mylar. Now the supports do get in the way, so after the timer ended, I removed all the supports and then ran the parts again, just for a little bit, to get what was in the shadow the first time. And the tub is big enough that I can fully submerge and rinse off my resin vat, the build plate, and the tools I'm using. Now typically I run the wash cycle, but I guess I just didn't do it today. With all of the resin parts cleaned, dried, and ready to go, I can put the box together. First thing I want to do is make the clear windows red. I used a red stained glass spray paint on them and then clear epoxy to glue some red PVC film to the backside. I put my 123 blocks on top of each one to be sure the PVC has no air bubbles behind the window pieces. And I cut them free of the PVC sheet and I can see that they're not as clear as I had hoped. And I think that is mostly the fault of the stained glass spray paint. I'll have to wait to see how well they work with the LED lights that I'm going to be putting inside of the box. Okay. So I got all the parts sprayed with a gloss black. Everything is just spray painted. Both sides are all painted. These parts will stay black, but all of this gets to turn gold. Okay, it's been a couple of days, so the spray paint's gotten a chance to dry so I can actually handle these. It takes a minute for the metallics to dry, right? So I'm gonna be able to put all these together. Now there's one thing I did do in addition to just spray painting all of this gold. On this particular part, I drilled out the bottom of this piece here. Now, if I had planned ahead, I could have modified that before I printed it, but I didn't. So I drilled it out using my drill press, and that way the lantern that I've got will be able to fit 
and that'll provide all the light I need to make this thing light up. What I do need to do though is rewire it with a switch. So I think that's the first thing I'm gonna do is the electronics and then I can start building it. I was really lucky that I had a hole saw the exact size for the bottom of the lantern to fit and that'll give me easy access for changing the batteries. Right now, the lantern turns on by pulling it open. So I need to change the switch inside to one that's just simply on and off. Four little screws hold the bottom on and the switch is right there. Well, that's easier than I thought, okay. Desolder the switch and remove it. I drill a hole in the side so I can run some external wires in for a new switch. And I solder the new switch in place, connecting one end to the battery box and the other to the wire that the original switch was attached to. And I always use shrink tube inside of my projects anymore. Far too often, unprotected wires would short out and not light up exactly at the time when I needed them to. I'll stop to make sure my connections are good. <laughs> I made a mistake. I did make a mistake. I didn't make the hole. I didn't put this into the base first. Oh, I get I get to undo it. <laughs> well, let's make sure I did it right. Insert the batteries. Hey, okay, good. Remove the handles from the top, and I need to do something that'll prevent the lantern from closing up once it's inside of the box. Never fear. Here comes the foam element, so it's still a build for my channel. I cut a small chunk of foam. So what's with this piece of foam? Well, the idea is I'm gonna put this inside and then screw the battery cover back on top of it. And that should prevent the light from closing back up on itself once it's glued inside the container. Replace the screws. There. Now, over time, it won't work its way down. It can't compress anymore. That's what that piece of foam was for. It still lights up, right? Okay, good. I didn't make space for the switch on the base, but there are cracks from when I was drilling out the hole. I could do that. Maybe I should do that. Instead of making another hole in this thing, what if I can run wires out one of the cracks and just glue the switch to the side? That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Okay. I carefully wrap the switch with some four millimeter foam, super gluing it in place, and then glue it to the side of the base. The foam was just a mounting point for the switch. Besides, it's more foam. To help stabilize the lantern inside, I glue some more foam as uprights on each of the sides. These will help stabilize the lantern inside when I unscrew the base to replace the batteries. Now to actually start building it. The kit had printed pins for everything to connect with, but I'll, I just cut some aluminum rod to use instead. And I glued my first corner in. And I fit one of the bottom walls and attach the second corner. Everything is just supposed to just fit together. Come on. You're right there. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. You know, stuff being that tight of a fit, it's gonna be really hard getting the upper parts on, but we'll work on that. I get the rest of the bottom layer in place and drop in the four red windows and everything is fitting together pretty nicely, which is good because spray paint adds to the surface of the parts and makes them all just a little bit thicker. I drop more of my metal pins into the top of each corner and now to see if the top piece will fit the way I want it to. With all the corners moving around, it's pretty tricky getting all these pins to go in just the right place. Oh, it actually went together. I mean, it's supposed to. It's just... <laughs> of course it went together, but you... <laughs> I'll get the handles put on in just a minute. Let's see, let me get everything glued together first. Now I want to see how well the light works. Okay, good. All right. That's not... That's not too bad, but I am seeing some light leak. And I'll be honest, 
I'm not totally sold on my red pieces. I think, uh, I'm not getting the hot spot that I wanted. In the movie, you can actually see the the, the really hot spot in the center where, where the reality stone is. This one's got a really good glow, but it's not, it's not what I want. Well, good thing this is 3D printed, right? Because I can always print another set and try again. I print another set of the clear pieces. And this time, I'm using acrylic floor wax instead of the frosted spray paint. And I can tint the floor wax with a red food color. And this mixture actually works really well. I mean, it isn't super dark red. It doesn't look like it's fully covering the pieces. So it's been a couple hours. These guys have gotten a chance to dry. They're not, they're not perfect dry, but they're a lot better. Is that gonna... Oh yeah, that's so much redder. That's a much better color. So they're kind of pink with just the, the wash that I put on them. If I got a real translucent ink or transparent paint, probably been a lot better. Compared to the Jolly Rancher color of, of these guys, I'm liking this one a lot better. Yeah, I'm, just not, gonna, I'm not sold on those. I'm gonna need a couple more pieces of this clear red PVC sheet and I want to cut it a little big so it goes beyond the top and the bottom. That eliminate the little, that will eliminate the little light leak that I was seeing above and below. It'll still be there, but if it's all red, it's going to blend in and no one's going to care. Cut more red PVC film to size, and I can use a small piece of aluminum tape to hold the gel in place. The real trick for me is getting the tape stuck to the inside of the box with the lantern in the way. Great. Didn't break, did it? I get the first piece in place and tape the top panel down. Oh yeah. Oh, let's get the rest of that put on. That's way more what I wanted. Look, you got a hot spot in the middle and it's red. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to say, and then I put it all back together. But since I had assembled it once before, and now the parts are a little looser and probably set in a different order. Plus, I added a step by applying tape onto the back of each piece. This is really not all that easy. No! <laughs> oh, it's all loose because I did it once before. No! <laughs> I found it easier to rub the tape in place with the end of a ruler. I mean, it worked well for getting the tape on anyway. Getting in the last wall was not easy. The tape to the walls was really challenging. If I was to make another, I might use the clear epoxy again and glue the oversized PVC film to the window piece. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, here's the, <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up and turn it on and then I'll glue it. Where's the switch? <laughs> there it is. Okay, much better. I'm not seeing any light coming from between the, the black and the red panels. Not like it was before. It was pretty bad before. I have some light leaks around the corners a little bit. I don't think I can do much about that right now. Okay, so I want to glue this. I use thin CA glue to glue the parts together. I just apply the glue in the cracks and hope that it gets me the coverage I want. I mean, I know I will, I'm just being dramatic. With the walls and top glued on, I can put the pegs into the handles and set them in place on top of the box. Okay. This is actually the last piece. I need to be super careful to not get so much glue 
that I glue the handles in place. That would suck. A little bit in the hole, a little bit in the hole. Piece there, just in the middle, that's all. best interest to give this a moment or, or 12 to dry all right after the glue has a chance to set I can mix some acrylic paint with rubbing alcohol to make a black wash that I can paint into the cracks and details and then wipe off the smooth areas I weather the box pretty heavily this way and I let the black smudge just sit in some places because I want a fairly weathered look and I work the black wash over all the gold items. I like that I'm still getting a really good sheen from some of the gold spray paint, but overall, it has a dirtier, weathered look, which I really like. The digital model that I used in this video was created by Props and Stuff over on his YouTube channel. I have links for both of them in the description. I'm sure like a lot of you, I honed my making skills and especially the finishing skills, the painting skills, doing model kits in my youth. I did a lot of, uh, of you know, Star Trek and Star Wars model kits when I was in elementary school, especially in high school. And then uh, I kind of moved on from Star Trek and Star Wars and anything else that came from a movie. I kind of moved on to doing Warhammer 40K and I played a lot of 40K, which with that game, you're still putting together basically model kits and painting them. And then you've got an agreed on set of rules so you can play with your models with your friends, right? That's, you know, that's 40K in a nutshell. It's playing with toys with your friends. Don't let anybody lie to you that it's different. Uh, what I really, really like about these particular pair of machines, and especially just resin printing in general, is I'm getting the detail that I want so I can relive those days and I can actually put together models again. And now the options for the models to build have greatly increased because whether it's something that somebody has already made, like props and stuff, who generously gave him permission to use this model, uh, his STL model uh, for this video, uh, I can use things like that, or I can even kind of create my own if I get any better at 3D modeling on the computer. Um, I think that's really kind of neat and really kind of fun. And having the Anycubic Washing Cure Plus makes resin printing enjoyable. Resin printing was cool anyway, right? It really is. You, you get the pieces that you want, you get the detail that you want. But let's face it, it was a little bit of a chore figuring out how to clean the things. You weren't sure, or at least I wasn't sure, if they were cleaned well enough or not. And then you had to deal with all the tools uh, afterwards. You had to clean the build plate, you had to clean the, the, the resin vat and so forth. This does all that. The difference between having this and not having this is doing the dishes by hand and having a really good dishwasher where you can just rinse the dishes off maybe and stick in the machine and you're done. That's, that's this. And this makes the process of cleaning up the parts and curing the parts enjoyable. It's quick, it's easy, it's contained, and the resin vat fits inside of the nine liter container of cleaning fluid, which makes it real easy to turn it on, turn the whirlpool on, get it all cleaned up, wipe it off, and I can set my machine aside because I don't print every day, so I don't want to leave the resin in here because I don't think it's good for it. Now, I know there's going to be lots of different ways that you can 3D print, print different props that you might want to make, but this is how Odin prints. How to do it even simpler without all right, without without making it so like, hey guys, huh, I painted shit black, sort of. I had some help. I needed an adult. Eight minutes the first time, half an hour to get it fixed. All right, uh, whatever. I want to thank Eric Lutz, Laura, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. There's still trains going by. Yeah, I don't know. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.
there. 